Welcome to Consumer Science News and Notes, an informative program from experts on your health, home, family, food, and finances. Did you know there's a lot more to child's play than most people realize? Or that there could be an unwanted traveler along when people move to a new home? Consumer Science News and Notes will explain these interesting facts and offer useful and intriguing information. During the program, we will let you know about websites you can visit for useful data and ideas. We'll also tell you where to send for free brochures and information packets. High blood pressure, or HBP, is a leading cause of death. You see, high blood pressure isn't just one thing. It's a domino effect. If it's not controlled, it can lead to heart attack or stroke, even kidney failure. 80 million American adults have HBP, but they don't have to. Check your blood pressure. Know your numbers. Learn more at heart.org slash HBP. Did you know that your child is building critical life skills every time they play? That's the genius of play. Research shows that playtime helps kids develop cognitive, physical, social, and emotional skills, boosts creativity, reduces stress, and nurtures family bonds. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that children spend at least 60 minutes daily engaged in open-ended play. To help raise a smarter, healthier, happier generation, visit thegeniusofplay.org. The next time you move, remember not to pack gypsy moths. These pests can kill more than 300 different species of trees. That's why the Department of Agriculture requires you to get an official certificate of inspection showing you're moth-free. You can hire a state-certified pesticide applicator or do your own check of lawn furniture, grills, and outdoor toys for egg masses. Use a putty knife or stiff brush to scrape them into a container of hot, soapy water. Give the moving van driver the certificate. Learn more at moving.org. Come on, it's not that hard. My big man fingers are having a problem with these little tiny buttons. <laughs> Whoa, watch it there. Your blood pressure's gonna go through the roof. Tell me about it. I'm trying to learn how to get it down. Instead, it keeps going up. High blood pressure can increase the risk for heart attack or stroke. Learn how to keep yours at a healthy range. Ever hear a voice command? Just say, text Barbershop to 97779. That's not what I said. Just give me that. Now my blood pressure's up. <sighs> day that I had my heart attack and I thought I was healthy uh, and I had no warnings. After I came out of the operation, the first thing I said to my wife is, honey, maybe this is my second chance. And it was the start of something big, going out and telling people about the heart. And hopefully, we'll save more lives. Certain American veterans with vision loss are bonding with their counterparts in England. Through Project Gemini, a joint initiative of the Blinded Veterans Association and Blind Veterans UK, veterans from the U.S. visit Britain to share knowledge, insights, and friendship. They exchange ideas about rehabilitation and readjustment training, sports for the blind, vision research, and adaptive technology. The association helps blinded veterans of all eras regardless of how they lost their sight. Learn more at 800-669-7079 or visit bva.org. When someone you love is ill, it's important to realize that you have limits. It can really help you both to have a solid support team in place and for you to get assistance when you need it. Family, friends, and your health care providers are a good place to start. But sometimes connecting with others who are going through similar journeys can also make a difference. It's all part of working yep. together, yep. especially when you love each other. Yep. You just can't do enough for the yeah. other and that's all there is And we to. have such a huge support system of family and friends and and support that oh yeah we have built this social network of of people that care 
picture. And, well, you know and we people care built it all up together. From, and we've been together for a long time. So. Yeah. 25 years, I guess. Yeah, think. yeah. Pretty long. Pretty long, yeah. Life is why. Support is why. In answer to the call for a way to avoid annoying calls from telemarketers, the Federal Communications Commission has put certain rules into effect. For instance, anyone making a telephone solicitation call to your home must provide his or her name, the name of the person or entity on whose behalf the call is being made, and a telephone number or address at which that person or entity can be contacted. Telephone solicitation calls to your home, including automated and pre-recorded messages, are prohibited before 8 a.m. or after 9 p.m. You can sign up for the National Do Not Call list. Once your home number or numbers and any personal wireless phone numbers are on the list, callers are prohibited from making telephone solicitation to those numbers. You can also ask those telephone solicitors who do call to put you on their company's own Do Not Call list. Telemarketers must comply immediately with any Do Not Call request you make during a solicitation call. You can learn more from the Federal Communications Commission at FCC.gov. Most trouble with medication, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention points out, comes from preventable reactions to drugs and combinations of drugs. Elderly people are the most likely to have this difficulty, especially because they tend to take many different pills for many different conditions. Another problem is not taking prescribed medication properly, or even at all. That, too, appears to be associated with the number of drugs prescribed. What doctors can do about this is try to keep the number of pills a person has to take to a minimum make sure their patients understand what they're supposed to take and why, and monitor and follow up with patients that the pills were taken. What an individual and those who care for him or her can do includes setting an alarm or other reminder about when to take medication, asking friends and family to check that the medicine has been taken, and knowing what to do if a dose has been skipped. If the problem is being able to afford the medication, you should contact the manufacturer. Many offer free or low-cost products to people who need them. Some 10 million people go cruising from U.S. ports every year. If you and your family have never been among them, there are three things you may want to think about when planning your next vacation. First, cruising offers something for everyone, from the very young to the young at heart. It's great for groups, celebrations, and meeting new people. There can be onboard day camps for the kids, peaceful adults-only areas on deck, and activities geared to every age group. You can enjoy spa treatments, signature drinks and snacks, and spectacular sea views. Evenings can be filled with live entertainment and a sky full of stars. Next, it's educational. Onboard activities often include lectures, lessons, and special sessions for kids, even trivia games where you can show how much you know. While shore excursions can be to historic, natural, and cultural places, the whole family can appreciate. Finally, it's surprisingly economical. You don't have to pay for food or hotel rooms in the various ports, and you can get bargains on duty-free items, jewelry, and more on board the ship. With election season heating up, many Americans are trying to predict what will happen by looking back at past contests. Here are a few facts and stats from the experts at the U.S. Census Bureau that may help with that. For one thing, you should know that voting rates are historically higher in years with presidential elections than in congressional election years. For example, the national voting rate in 2012, a presidential election, was nearly 62 percent, while the national voting rate in 2010, a congressional election, was less than 46 percent. Also, voting and registration rates tend to increase with age. In the United States in 2012, only a little over 41% of 18 to 24-year-olds voted, compared with 72% of those 65 and older. Furthermore, in many elections, women voted higher rates than men. In 2012, the voting rate was nearly 64% of women, but less than 60% of men. Finally, voting rates also typically vary by race. You can learn more about this online at census.gov. Some 55 million people visit New York City a year. If you plan on being among them, there are a few places you should be sure to see, according to the city's official guide. Start with an elevator ride up to the observation deck of the Empire State Building. This soaring Art Deco masterpiece offers an unobstructed view of the city below. For a spectacular vista that includes the Empire State Building itself, go to the top of the rock at 30 Rockefeller Plaza. Back on the ground, in wintertime, you can take a few turns around the Rockefeller Center skating rink and see the holiday tree. Then, 
take a walk through world-famous pedestrian-friendly Times Square. Take a ferry ride to the Statue of Liberty and another to the Ellis Island Immigration Museum for a fascinating view of an historic crossroads. Then take a stroll over that lovely landmark, the Brooklyn Bridge. There's a lot more that's entertaining, educational, and exhilarating to do and see. To learn about them, go to nycgo.com. Women worried about fitting in the time to get and stay fit may be glad to know the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says it may be simpler than you think. You can help your health without a lot of strenuous activity. Persistence, however, is important. A moderate amount of physical activity done daily can be better for you than very vigorous activity you don't do very often. You can try longer sessions of moderately intense activities, such as 30 minutes of brisk walking, or shorter sessions of more strenuous activities, such as 15 minutes of jogging. Enough physical activity offers many health benefits. It reduces the risk of coronary heart disease, high blood pressure, colon cancer, and diabetes, helps maintain healthy bones, muscles, and joints, helps control weight, build lean muscle, and reduce body fat, helps control joint swelling and pain associated with arthritis, reduces symptoms of anxiety and depression, and fosters improvements in mood and feelings of well-being. You can check with your doctor about what activities are best for you and learn more at cdc.gov. If you're taking a vehicle off-road for entertainment and adventure, following these tips can add to your safety and enjoyment. Make sure you let someone know where you will be and when you expect to return. This applies to all trips. People have been known to get stuck or lost in relatively easy terrain. Even a Sunday drive on the beach can turn sour. That's why it's wise to pack the proper gear, food, and water or juice to get you through the night and to handle medical emergencies that may occur. When you are traveling, be sure everyone keeps arms and legs inside the vehicle. Many trails run through narrow passageways. If the vehicle begins to tip, your instinct is to put your hand out. There is no way you will be able to stop a vehicle this way. Off-road driving requires the utmost concentration. Any letdown can lead to an accident or worse. If you feel fatigued at all, pull over and rest or let someone else drive. Those looking for a career in an industry that pays well and is almost always in demand may want to consider the construction trades. One benefit to pursuing such a career is that people can start from different points, whether it's right out of school or from another industry. There's no one right path for everyone. Another benefit to pursuing a career in construction is that many of the skills and experiences you acquire over time are often transferable from one trade to another. For example, welders, iron workers, and boiler makers all work with similar materials and equipment. A crane operator already has many of the skills it takes to become a heavy equipment operator. Plus, experience as a skilled tradesperson can lead to other paths down the road, such as management, health and safety, training and education, engineering and science, home repair, or even starting your own business. The industry also offers access to national and international job markets. This gives a trained individual the opportunity to select an employer in any city or town anywhere in the world. Few other careers offer this sort of opportunity. There's water, water everywhere in fountains, bottles, and glasses, iced in room temperature. Consumers are told to be sure they're drinking enough, but rarely are they told why. Here are some of the benefits of proper hydration. For starters, drinking water helps to maintain the balance of body fluids, which aids digestion, absorption and transportation of nutrients, circulation, creation of saliva, and maintenance of body temperature. Substituting water for higher calorie beverages can help you keep calories under control, Plus, portions of food with high water content tend to look larger, require more chewing, and are absorbed more slowly by the body, which can help you feel full. When you exercise, water helps energize muscles. Muscle cells that don't have adequate fluids don't work as well, and your performance can suffer. Water also helps keep skin looking good. Your skin contains plenty of water and functions as a protective barrier to prevent excess fluid loss. Maintaining proper hydration also helps to transport waste products out of cells and keeps the kidneys working as they should. Plus, it can help to reduce the risk of kidney stones. If you're thinking of buying a small farm as a place to retire, following these tips can help prevent that dream from becoming a nightmare. Two basic types of farms exist in the United States, family farms and corporate farms. Family farms are independently owned and operated and typically much smaller operations that produce milk, vegetables, nuts and fruit, grapes, and trees for the lumber industry, nurseries, and other uses. Buying agricultural land is a specialized type of real estate transaction that requires an experienced real estate agent. 
If you don't know one, speak to local people involved in the farm industry and ask for referrals to several agents who deal with farm properties. If your dream is to farm organically, invest in professional soil testing to look for heavy metals and other factors that could prevent you from engaging in organic production. When it comes time to finance the deal, contact the website of the Federal Agricultural Mortgage Corporation, Farmer Mac, and the United States Department of Agriculture's Farm Service Agency website. They can provide you with information on various loan programs and educational resources. If you travel by plane or train, you can increase your chances of staying safe in a crash by taking a few simple steps as you board. For example, if you are traveling by plane, experts suggest you should choose an aisle seat that is within six rows of the emergency exit on the aircraft. Experience shows this could help increase your chances of making it out of the aircraft safely in the event of a water landing. When traveling on a train, passengers should avoid sitting in the first or last car since they're more likely to be hit in a collision with another train or vehicle. When selecting a seat, take one where your back is facing the direction of travel. It's also a good idea to avoid seats that have luggage overhead, since falling luggage can cause injuries or block exit paths. Also, make sure you know where the emergency exit and the emergency door release are located. Once you're out of the train, stay clear of train tracks, since another train may approach without warning. Here are some tips on preventing heart disease you can take to heart. Experts say one of the keys to avoiding the problem is getting risk factors under control. These include high blood pressure and high cholesterol levels. As a first step toward preventing heart disease, try the following trio. Improve cholesterol levels, exercise and eat a heart-healthy diet. This can help you get control of high blood pressure and your weight, as well as help to manage stress. Low cholesterol heart healthy foods include apples, beans, carrots, and other bright yellow vegetables and oily fish, such as mackerel, salmon, and sardines. Also, limit carbohydrates, sugar, and foods that include white flour. And if you still smoke, quit. Screening is also an important way to prevent heart trouble. That means getting your blood pressure and cholesterol checked regularly. Adults 25 and older should have their cholesterol screened and should also be screened for diabetes starting in the 20s. High blood pressure checks should also start in the 20s. Recent studies suggest taking aspirin or ibuprofen regularly could help protect against breast and colon cancer. Researchers compared the incidence of breast cancer among women who regularly took non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin and ibuprofen and women who said they did not. They found a 21% reduction in breast cancer risk after five years, a 20% reduction after 10 years. The ibuprofen seemed to confer even greater benefits than aspirin. Women who took it for 10 years or longer reduced their breast cancer risk by almost half. The non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may also protect against colon cancer in some people by preventing the formation of polyps. Doctors say the medications work by blocking a compound that triggers inflammation. Further, larger studies are needed to confirm the research. In addition to combat colon cancer, get a colonoscopy every 5 to 10 years and an annual occult blood test to reduce your risk of breast cancer, maintain a healthy weight, minimize alcohol consumption, avoid or minimize estrogen replacement therapy after menopause, and get regular exercise. If you're part of an average American family, you may eat as many as one in five meals outside the home. When eating out, children like to choose their dinners from the kids' menu. But should parents let them? That was the topic of a recent study by the Center for Science in the Public Interest. The study found that many kids' menu options met the government's daily recommendation for children, 1,500 calories and 17 grams of saturated fat, in just one meal. While adult menus have gotten healthier, most kids' menus continue to mimic fast food choices, but with bigger servings. More healthful options than the ever-present burgers and fries might be pasta with tomato sauce and a side salad, grilled chicken, or grilled fish. Parents may want to consider the number of healthy choices on the kids' menu before choosing a restaurant. The number of overweight and obese young people has nearly doubled in the past two decades. Until the next time, we hope these ideas for your health, your safety, and your finances make your day a little better and a lot more fun. Here are some interesting and entertaining oddities about spices and herbs. Some 200 million pounds of herbs and spices are consumed annually in the U.S., 
with black pepper, cinnamon, nutmeg, garlic, paprika, chili powder, oregano, celery seeds, celery salt, onions, and parsley heading the list. Generally speaking, herbs are leafy, aromatic plants usually grown from seed in the temperate zone of the earth. Spices, on the other hand, are often taken from pungent barks of trees or seeds or buds of plants generally grown in the tropics. There are some seasonings, such as mustard, which start out as herbs and, after going to seed, are classified as spices. Herbs are used to enhance the existing flavors of a dish and should not overwhelm the taste buds. Dried herbs are about three times stronger than fresh. It's better to use too little than too much. Freshly ground spices are usually thought to have a stronger flavor than the commercially grown kind. This is particularly true of peppercorns, nutmeg, and allspice. That's why many people crush their own spices. Incidentally, fresh ground pepper won't make you sneeze. Remember when using herbs and spices, the nose and eyes are as important as the palate. For example, a more intense color is often an indicator of freshness and flavoring capacity. The greener the green herb, such as parsley or tarragon, or the redder the spice, such as cayenne or paprika, the more likely it's fresh. The heat produced by spices or other foods is measured in Scoville Heat Units, SHU, which were originally created by Wilbur Scoville, who pioneered the process for measuring the heat produced by a food or spice. Today, this test is conducted using a liquid chromatographer. Jalapenos have an average range of 5,000 to 7,000 SHU. Tabasco averages from 30,000 to 50,000 SHU. Habanero peppers, long thought to be the hottest on the planet, generally average 200 to 300,000 SHU. The Trinidad Scorpion Butch Tea, which formerly held the world record for the hottest pepper, has been rated at 1,463,700 SHU. This pepper is so strong that those who handle it must wear protective gloves. Capsaicin, the chemical in peppers that makes them hot, isn't found in any other plant and is potent enough that people can identify it even when the concentration is as little as one part per million. The part of the chili plant that is just below the stem produces the ribs and the seeds. Some of these parts are more than 16 times hotter than the rest of the pepper. With peppers, bigger might not be better, especially if you like them hot. Generally, the smaller the pepper, the hotter, and none of the hottest peppers in the world are more than three inches long. Chili peppers are high in vitamins, are a good source of beta-carotene, calcium, and potassium, and may help reduce cholesterol. Although most people think eating spicy foods such as chili peppers can cause stomach ulcers, the opposite is true. Ingesting spicy food can help heal ulcers by stimulating the concentration of mucosa, the protective lining of the stomach, and killing the bacteria responsible for the ulcer. When handling peppers, especially if it is a pepper you have never used before, wear gloves. Some oils can blister skin or result in an allergic reaction. The best way to ease the burn of flaming hot peppers or overly spicy mustard or horseradish is with cold milk or yogurt. Avoid water as it won't mix with the oil and will only result in moving the heat to other parts of your mouth. Throughout history, basil has been thought to incite romantic passions. In Italy, it symbolizes love. Known as the herb of friendship and remembrance, rosemary is pungent and has an almost pine-like flavor when cooked. We hope you've enjoyed these interesting and entertaining oddities about spices and herbs.